Happy New Year everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a few surprises to share with you. Um, I thought I'd start off this year's videos with a little sneak peek at my Christmas presents that I got that were art supply related and then some books that I also got. Um, one was a Christmas present and these were a couple of Christmas surprises for myself. If you hear ambient noises um, I have my window open because it is such a lovely day outside. It's like low 60s and there's a breeze. It almost feels like spring and I'm loving it because <laughs> I know that winter is going to be quite a long one. Um, it just got started here and so anytime we have a warm day I soak it up. So I'll start off by showing you the two books that I got for myself. These are books that I bought not so much for the story as I did the artwork. Um, this particular book is a version, it's a retelling of an old Nordic fairy tale. Um, the ending is changed slightly from the original, so keep that in mind if you do read it. But what I initially fell in love with was the artwork. The illustrations are just lovely. Beautiful watercolor, and it's been really inspiring to me just to flip through and look and see how Jackie Morris has illustrated, you know, this fairy tale fantasy story. It's just beautiful. Um, I love her use of color it's, as she paints animals. It's been really fascinating to study and look at and see how she uses color to paint a white polar bear. Some of the illustrations are smaller like this one. Others are more full bleed. And I just love this. I mean, look at the bleeding here, the, the cauliflower blooms that create the bark textures, how she uses color instead of just, you know, making things more, I guess, standard colors. Like even in the wolf, there's some, it looks like ultramarine. I'll show you some of my favorite. This one's one of my absolute favorites. I love how she's got all this color on the snow. It's, you know, such a inviting piece. This necklace is important to the story and I love the turquoise. It almost looks like the Schmincke Ocean Gray, which is a color that I confess is on my list right now. I have a wish list of different colors at Jackson's right now. There's one picture in particular I'm looking for to show you. There's a particular picture of a castle that I especially liked. Ah, here it is. Yeah, this one. I love how the sky, you've got granulation, almost, almost like splattering just so lovely. It kind of looks like she used salt in some of these. She probably did. Okay, anyway, so this is East of the Sun, West of the Moon, Jackie Morris. She's got several other books. Um, I also have her book, The Unwinding, which is just, just lovely. So the next book is a favorite of mine. Probably many of you have heard of this book. I have the original version, but on Christmas Day, an animated um, show was released on Apple TV and this book is the animated version in book form. And I saw this book on Natasha Newton's channel and I just love the illustration so I had to get one for myself. It's just, it's just magical. It draws you in. I've never seen a book illustrated quite in this way before. It looks animated but also very analog. My favorite are some of the landscapes. I love how she does, or how Charlie Maxey, um, how he does trees. Trees are something that I've really tried to improve on this year, and I love looking at how other people do trees. My favorite is when I see lots of colors on people's trees, because when you look at trees, your initial assessment is probably that they're either gray or brown. But if you look more closely and start really paying attention, you might actually start to see some of these colors that you see artists using, like turquoise or purple, in, within the shadows. There's a lot more variety out in the natural world than you initially think. And the more I start paying attention to color, the more I notice color. Sometimes when I'm looking at a landscape, I'll just squint my eyes and try to see the colors. I love this one. It just looks so soft and the light. I think the lighting in these pieces is what draws me in the most. I mean, look at this. It just, it's 
got such a warm, lovely dusk glow. The water. Yeah, I could just pour over these for a long time. Golden hour is one of my favorite times of day. It always has been, especially for photography. Oh, I love this picture right here. I love moonlit, moonlit scenes. Well, I won't go through the entire book, but if you're looking for some winter inspiration or just wanting to see, I love studying art pieces. Reference photos are fun to look at and work through. I have hundreds of reference photos on Pinterest, but I also like to collect artwork that I enjoy and I like to study it and to see how did they create that? What strokes did they use? How many marks? What kinds of mediums? And it's so informative. Especially if you try to copy it. Obviously you wouldn't try to sell a piece like this, but when you try to copy somebody else's work and learn how they created an effect, it's one of the most educational things you can do. I love the atmospheric perspective in this piece. So this book right here was a present from my parents for Christmas. It's one that has been in my Amazon cart for a long time. And I'm so excited to finally have it in my hands. It's almost like a textbook for artists on colors in the natural world. It's called Nature's Palette, a color reference system from the natural world. And it is, it's an incredible book. It's one that you could just pick up and flip through, um, get inspiration from, get color palette ideas. But then if you wanted to actually read it and go into details, there's so much in here about how this book was put together, how colors were named back in history, colors of the natural world, how they were cataloged, how this book came to be. I mean, it is, it is just phenomenal. I love all the color palettes that they put together here of just different things from the natural world. All the photographs are just a feast for the eyes. And so they're all different chapters that you can go through. Um, so from my understanding, this book came about because they, whoever originally wrote this, was trying to name all the different rocks and minerals, name the colors of them so that they could be classified. And then I believe it was expanded to include not just minerals, but animals and plants too. This thing is really neat because this goes over all the different colors that are in this book. And if you notice, none of them are particularly bright and vivid. They're all very muted, very earthy. I'll go to the blues pages because blue is my favorite. Where does it begin? Yeah, okay, so here's the blues section. I love these birds, just the blue. <clears throat> and so here we have, um, I believe these are scans from an old book of the original blue colors that were cataloged and identified here. But then here is a more modern spread of it. And so you can go through all these different colors. And what I plan to do with this is use it for color swatches to mix colors and kind of use this as a base for colors that I want to achieve. And so, you know, when we have a color palette, you have a watercolor palette, it's sometimes good to have colors that inspire you immediately, that you look at them, they're those convenience colors that are ready mixed and they draw you in, you can just use them as is. But it's also really good to have mixing colors and I have a variety of both on my ceramic palette. And the nice thing about that is that you have all the colors that you could want, it's just unlocking those colors. Um, I'm planning to do a mixing video to show you, um, to kind of do some exploration of the colors that I have and to show you just how versatile even just a few colors can be. But what this book does is that say you're on a budget and you can only afford a few basic mixing colors, this right here can be inspiring to help you figure out, okay, I really am drawn to this particular blue and I wanna paint something. This is inspiring me to paint either an ocean scene or you know what have you. And then you can try to mix to achieve that color. And so by seeing the colors, it can kind of get your creative juices flowing when you can't necessarily look at your palette and see these colors. I hope that makes sense. That was a long way around of what I wanted to say, but. So yeah, it goes more into depth to each color. It's interesting, ultramarine, I always thought of ultramarine as being more, um, 
more warm and more vivid than that. Here it says, ultramarine blue is a mixture of equal parts of Berlin and azure blue. Here is Berlin blue mixed with carmine red to mix azure blue. See, I have carmine, and so if I had Berlin blue, I can mix those two together to get this azure blue. So it just kind of helps you utilize the color palette that you have and unlock the different colors that are latent within, latent within your palette. So the other thing about this book that I really like, I use mostly Schmincke and Daniel Smith paints with some Jackson ones thrown in there. Um, but I would like to eventually try some Winsor & Newton paints. It's been on my um, to-do list for a while. So yeah, someday I'll go through and pick out all these different colors. They have listed here the Winsor & Newton color that goes with it. If you use Karen Dash, you can also use that. And then there's also decorators paint. Say you use Ferro and Ball of Paint to decorate your home. You can see what color in their color palette matches up with some of these colors that are in this book. There's also the CMYK and Pantone colors for printing. I'm not, I'm going to look into this because I've had, I've struggled in the past with trying to get my prints to look like my paintings. Sometimes it's taken me a couple of tries with a printer to make sure that my colors look correct. Um, and I believe it's a fault of my editing. It's diff difficult to calibrate my monitor. The lighting in my apartment is not the best, as you probably have noticed in my videos. But so what I'm going to try to do is see if I can try to find a color here that corresponds to a color in my painting and try to match it and see if that helps me fix the white balance when I'm preparing paintings for print. So. Okay, so now to the art supply portion of this video. I have three different things to show you. I have this sketchbook here, I have some Derwent drawing pencils, and I have an etcher brush roll. And um, I'm really excited about all three of these for different reasons. So we'll just go through. Um, I'll start with the etcher brush roll here. So I don't travel particularly often, but I would like to start getting into plein air painting, especially as it starts getting warmer. It's such a beautiful area where I live and I'd like to take advantage of that by, by practicing painting from life. So anyway, I'm going to get out a few of my brushes to show you how this works. So I have quite the collection of paint brushes here. Um, lots of different sizes. Um, I think I'm going to do, tell me if you're interested in this. this. In my mind it sounds like an initially boring video, but I don't know, I think I would like to watch a video like this where an artist just goes through all their brushes and what they use them for and why, favorite brands, things like that. So I'm thinking about doing that video this month. So if you're interested, leave a comment and let me know. Because I have several brands and several different shapes and sizes that I use for different things. So if you'd like to know what I use, what are my favorites, I would love to show you. But anyway, so let's go through. This little flap here is meant to protect the brushes a little bit more from dust and things getting into them. So I'm just going to go through and test. It looks like, yeah, some of these pockets are bigger than others. These are smaller. That one's slightly, no, I would say these are all about the same size and these are a little bit larger. So a brush like this, this is a three quarter inch oval wash. Yeah, that fits perfectly. I don't know if a brush like this, this one's a pretty large. Yeah, so this is a huge mop brush, a size eight. Or I take that back. This is a quilt. So something like that wouldn't fit. But these are my long rounds. These fit really snugly. Which is nice because then I won't have to worry about them falling out. This is, this is exceptionally nice. And so then you just simply close it up. Roll it. And then you can, you know, tie it off. So this will be great when I travel and visit family or if I, you know, want to take paints on vacation, that sort of thing. Or just, like I said, paint outdoors. It's a really nice heavy-duty canvas feel. It feels very well made. This is the first Etcher product that I've ever purchased, so I'm excited to give this a go. I love the canvas color. 
I looked a long time before I could find a brush roll that I liked. A lot of the brush rolls were very, how shall I say this, very utilitarian and not very aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> this one is actually just, I don't know, simple, crafty looking. I like it. I like the, the natural canvas color. I think it's pretty. So this is a very unique gift from my parents. Um, if I can find a link for it, I'll post it below, but I doubt I'll be able to find one. This came from a bookshop in South Carolina. My parents went on a trip there last summer. It was an independent bookstore, from what I understand, and these were handcrafted, leather-bound notebooks. And it's just so... I don't know, it's just so warm and inviting. It's... It feels good in your hand. I love the leather. Of course, I love the quote. It's just perfect for me. The paper itself is really interesting. It almost feels handmade. It's not watercolor paper. I'm primarily going to use this for ink sketching, I think, and also colored pencil work. Um, in the back here, I did test out my colored pencils a little bit because I was just so excited and couldn't wait until I got home. So it does really well with the colored pencils. So yeah, you might see this in a video if I decide to test watercolor on it or do some ink work. I thought about doing some sketching videos too if you're interested in something like that. I think I think it would be I just love this. This is just so so unique and and perfect for a Tolkien fan like myself. And last but not least, we have the Derwent drawing pencil set. This pencil set is just just lovely. I've never had a professional colored pencil set. This is my first. When I was a kid I loved any drawing medium, markers, colored pencils, crayons. So I think it's going to be fun to, to get back into a more simple way of creating art. I'm going to enjoy trying to sketch and draw with these and I'm also going to use them to add some details to my watercolor pieces. So I thought what I would do today is just sketch out or swatch out all the colors for you so that you could see them. I'm following in Natasha Newton's footsteps here and doing some little circle swatches and I like how she does light and dark ones so you can kind of see the range of what this does. They're very soft and creamy. They don't leave a lot of dust so far. This one is Solway Blue. This one is Ink Blue. I'm in the market now for a really good pencil sharpener. I have just a very cheap one that I use for my sketching pencils, but for these I'd like to get something really nice because I don't want to break the tips and I want to be able to get them to a nice sharp point. So if you have any recommendations Please leave a comment. This one is ink blue. This one is smoke blue. I can imagine a lot of these being featured in the Nature's Palette book. They look like the kinds of colors that you would see in that book. This one is pale cedar. Try my best to keep them all in line and make the swatches roughly even. So this one is Green Shadow. So I thought while I was doing this I'd also tell you about some of my ideas for upcoming videos. I really enjoy making vlogs. It's going to be a challenge to do that this time of year because things are getting kind of dead and ugly outside and the weather's a little bit finicky. So I'm going to try to take advantage of warm days. This is Crag Green. And film some vlogs, but I really want to get more into filming more art related videos. I've most of my videos in the past were a mixture of a vlog and a little painting sneak preview and then as we started ending the year I started doing just more straight vlogs with some weeks being a, an entire video dedicated to painting. This is all of Earth. And so I think in the future I'm going to continue that model and do a couple of vlogs a month. 
just things that are going on in my life, inspiration around my home, just kind of letting you experience the beauty of Northwest Arkansas. This one is Warm Earth. But then for the painting videos, I'm going to do a mixture of things. I want to do more painting process videos, just letting you watch over my shoulder as I paint or as I sketch, you know, trying out new mediums and things like that. But then I'm going to do more videos about art supplies. I'm going to obviously review new supplies that I get. This is brown ochre. But then I also want to make videos that are dedicated to the supplies I already own so that it kind of encourages you, especially if you're on a budget and you feel like you can't try very many new art supplies. I want to explore different ways of using them. Like I want to do color mixing videos with the colors that I have so that you can kind of see the potential in those. This is wheat. And just ways of using supplies in, in new ways. Maybe they're not brand new, but maybe they're new to you or new to me. And so I'm going to do videos like that. I also want to do some budget art supply videos because as a student I am on a very restricted budget. This is yellow ochre and I know that some of you might be in the same boat but you also want to use professional supplies or supplies that inspire you and so I'm going to do a whole series on art supplies that I really like that are in a very low price point. So that'll be something to look forward to. That'll probably be an ongoing series. This is red sepia. By the way, the paper that I'm using is Saunders Waterford. It's a slightly off-white. It says natural white on the cover. This is what it looks like. Arches is my favorite, but I use this one for kind of swatches and stuff. Um, anyway, so there'll be budget art supply videos. And they're all going to be supplies. I'm, I'm going to try to use supplies that... Um, are easily accessible if possible. This one is Mars Orange. They'll probably be themed too, like I have an idea to make like themed palettes that are budget palettes. So like, you know, finding a, a pretty ceramic plate instead of having to buy a more expensive ceramic palette if you, you know, can't afford something like that, but still want to have that aesthetic. Um, in your art studio and then put together themed palettes that have to do with you know subjects that I like to paint. This one is I think it's Sanguine. Is that how you pronounce it? I could be pronouncing that wrong. So yeah what else? Um, Yeah, and I'll just give you more sneak peeks into my, my business, and as that grows, this is Venetian Red. This is Terracotta. I want to feel free to experiment in my videos. I'm still exploring new mediums and new things and growing as an artist, and I think I think all artists would say that about themselves, that they never stop growing and never stop trying new things. And I want my video to be a place where I don't feel pressured to make something perfect or to be an expert at whatever I'm doing, but just simply to give you a glimpse into the process of being an artist and learning and growing and not being afraid to try new things, even if it doesn't turn out. This one is Mars Violet. I love that color. So I want it to just be kind of a low, a low key, relaxed, welcoming channel just kind of inviting you to peek at what I'm doing, peek at my art process. This is Ruby Earth. This one is Ivory Black. So my life outside of being an artist I was in a PhD or a, uh, a master's program in pursuit of a PhD. Things have changed directions a little bit and now I'm trying to apply into a straight PhD program in English literature. 
And so if I get into that program, that's going to be very exciting. This one is warm gray, but I won't find that out until later this spring. And so in the meantime, I'm going to be teaching some freshman English classes at my alma mater. And I'm really looking forward to that, actually. I've got some really fun ideas for making it more interesting. And so I'll be doing that full time in addition to doing art. My art. This is Cool Gray. And of course, Raising Bear. And the last one is Chinese White. You might not be able to see this on the page. I can sort of see it because the paper is not pure white, whereas the pencil is. So what I think I might do here is draw like a swatch of blue and let you see how it layers. So then I thought I meant to do white on top. That doesn't totally show up, but it kind of does. That's interesting. That's interesting because like I said, color pencils are kind of new to me since my childhood and seeing the blending capabilities. That is a lovely blue. I wonder if there are other colors that I could mix like that. Kind of scribble off the blue residue on this white pencil. But let's try a couple of other colors. Let's do, do Mars Violet. And hmm. I think I'll do this blue. This is smoke blue. That's lovely. Yeah, I'm gonna have fun experimenting with these. Let's try this is a Venetian red, so it's like Imagine like a tree branch here. So that's red. Let's say I wanted a darker color. Let's do let's do violet, ruby violet. With the shadow. That layers very nicely. I hope you can see that. Let's add in a little bit of a highlight with this Mars Violet. Yeah. I really like that. But yeah, so anyway, that's my my Christmas haul. I hope that you have a lovely beginning to your new year and that is filled with wonderful and exciting new things and days of both joy and rest. And I will see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>